So, hi everyone. My name is Evelyn Gertz. I'm a multidisciplinary philosopher and research fellow at the University of Birmingham, Post Humanities Hub a member, and an avid philosophy meme maker. I obtained my PhD from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and I'm literally obsessed by everything that relates to critical theory, political philosophical questions of identity, difference, and violence, but also space, time, matter, and ontologies, or that what basically traverses and queers uh, the space time continuum. And last but not least, new materialist, affic theoretical, and post humanist methodologies, thinking, and approaches which I will be delving into a bit more um, today. I'm of course delighted to be able to join the first Correctionville event organized by the Institute of Current Apology. Um, a big thank you to Marlise van Mulle for inviting me. And I am, as you can see, unfortunately, only digitally and in a yeah, disembodied yet still virtual material form present today because of bodily circumstances, um, which is quite ironic I guess, given the topic that I will be touching upon, which actually hyper accentuates the importance of embodied and situated positionalities and ways of thinking. I will, however, be um, appearing live on your screens on Saturday afternoon as well. So if you have any particular questions or topics or concepts or lived experiences to share and to discuss then um, please write these down on the sheet of paper um, that has been provided to you or keep them until Saturday. That's fine as well. That being said, let's get started. Um, I have tweaked the presentation a bit and turned it into a more or less classic um, positioning paper, I guess, asked to focus on setting the um, philosophical conceptual, conceptual scenery and contextualize and sketch out the new materialism's driven methodology of critical cartography. The goal of this presentation is to provide you all with some hopefully thought-provoking concepts and a methodological approach that then could be applied to your own research, artistic, or pedagogical praxis, and push your thinking um, to its limits when it comes to the multi-layered phenomenon of maps. Maps that, as I will argue, along the Lozo, Quartarian, and Bridadian lines, do not simply reflect existing realities and imaginaries, but um, also harbor the potential to create and destroy worlds. So today's paper is basically titled, as you can see, The Importance of Critical Cartographies and Situated Knowledge Production. And I split up the paper in three conveniently um, titled sections, Situated Knowledges, Rhizomes, and Critical Cartography, meaning I won't be delving into um, diffraction or uh, new materialisms as a philosophy, but I can of course always comment on that on Saturday um, as well. I will start with a short reflection though on the matter of maps and the disorientation that we probably have all felt and might even still be feeling um, during these ongoing um, crisis times. So, Maps and this slash re slash orientation in crisis times. Looking at Correction Vils's online presentational text and the interesting wiki entry on cartopology as a hybrid academic artistic discipline combining cartography with anthropological research methods and insights, it becomes clear that maps matter and then in two ways as something material and as a phenomenon or even tool with a certain function. Even though maps as noted on the events website as well are never, and I quote, as accurate as they suggest and are just perennially incomplete, or as I would put it, open-ended, maps are in origin quite material and situated in nature, having been constructed by an embodied map maker inhabiting a particular geographical space and geopolitical era. In addition to the situated materiality, which is, as I will point out soon, not always recognized or in a lot of cases even artfully hidden, maps also matter in the sense that we have to come to know them as functional tools. And maps help us basically, human subjects, to orientate ourselves and quite literally so find our ways. And these pandemic slash imperialist war-ridden slash neo-fascist slash post-truth crisis times 
are demonstrating the fact that we as human subjects have lost our way and ways, especially seen from a more holistic point of view that comprises the ecological and um, economic and also the social political. Complex crises such as the one that we, and that category for me, includes colonies of cult Danish minks, parts of the world's forest already burned down by the extractive capitalist machine, and the oceans whose surfaces are having to make space for massive volumes of polluting face masks. Well, the crisis times that we are currently living in are not just disorientating because they disorientate and um, take away some of the imaginary and actual places we could go through via the usage of maps and other tools. These crises also make us plunge into the unknown, forcing us to refamiliarize ourselves with the known, the supposed normal and the taken for granted, as they make us aware of our tendencies to navigate time and space without too much self-reflection. To quote from queer theorist Sarah Ahmed's queer phenomenology here from 2006, Moments of disorientation are vital. They are bodily experiences that throw the world up or throw the body from its ground. This orientation as a body feeling can be unsettling. At the same time though, as I'd like to argue, these traumatic moments of disorientation um, force us to reflect upon where we are going, meaning disorientation also opens up the possibility of reorientation. When it comes to the just name crises, the following question, of course, remains. What maps will we tweak or construct to get us out of this self-created mess while, to paraphrase Donna Haraway, still staying with the trouble and remaining aware of the fact that similar crises are bound to happen if we do not properly, it is accountably and responsibly reorientate ourselves. Critical cartography could be one of the potential answers here. As this new materialist methodology could assist, assist us um, with reflecting upon accountable knowledge production and more socially and posthumanly just ways of navigating the world. In order to explain the tenets of critical cartography, I will now delve into situated knowledges and rhizomatic thinking by the oeuvres of feminist science studies scholar Donna Haraway and of continental philosophers Jude Deleuze and Felix Guattari. So situated knowledges, and I've added this um, wonderful painting by Lynn Braldolf here, which um, has always been heavily featured in, in Haraway's books. And this is of course a reference to the cyborg um, in Haraway's work. Situated knowledges, well, writing about her quest for more socially just scientific knowledge praxis and multi-species living, Haraway in an article from 1988 already states the following. She says, feminists don't need a doctrine of objectivity that promises transcendence. We need the power of modern critical theories of how meanings and bodies get made, not in order to deny meanings and bodies, but in order to build meanings and bodies that have a chance for life, end quote. So rooted in feminist standpoint theory, science studies, and Marxist materialism, such as sit situated knowledge as project, um, basically emphasizes the fact that the material body and the environment of the researcher influence the knowledge that is being produced and vice versa. Haraway moves towards a theory and praxis of situated knowledges while never fully letting go of the philosophical theory of realism or um, basically the idea um, that there is an independently existing reality out there ontologically speaking that we can observe and produce um, knowledge about. Haraway's project does isn't at all like morally relativist. Um, she is looking for a more nuanced option, a middle ground between radical constructionists that believe that truth and knowledge claims are fully dependent on social political power relations and rhetoric, which was really a thing in the early kind of yeah postmodern 90s, let's say. And then on the other hand, the extreme empiricists um, who believe in completely neutral and untainted scientific knowledge production. So what Haraway with this notion of situated knowledges wishes to point at is that each and every perspective is forever contextual, partial, material or materially rooted and incomplete. And that seeing and thinking from nowhere, a totalizing Gotrek, as she calls it, is but a dangerous illusion. 
we need a multitude of situated perspectives if we are to arrive at a deeper understanding of our complex multifold reality. Moreover, every vantage and entry point into the production of canonical knowledge is about the question of the power to see. Vision, as Haraway, inspired by Foucault, teaches us, is never innocent, as it is, alas, often accompanied by violence that really, well, instrumentalizes, objectifies, and, and dispossesses, and maybe also annihilates. So the latter actually, unfortunately, has become partially clear um, in the century-old praxis of map making, right? Um, together with travel writing and narratives of exploration, cartography was part of and contributed to Western imperialism and colonialism. Especially since modernity, maps have been used as representational explorative tools and consequently have often misrepresented the world to glorify certain colonial powers and divide the world among them. Representing the world through the visual geographical concept of space, maps literally map out land and territories, as well as the, the specific resources, peoples, and other important features of these territories. The processes of delineating that, is, that are um, inherent in mapping have a controlling function. To map, mark, and delineate space means controlling and owning it theoretically epistemologically and politically speaking. So this is precisely what situated knowledge production, the feminist praxis critical cartography, together with the so-called politics of location is built upon, reveals. Maps are always power laden. And if a map maker is pretending to speak from a universalist top-down position, you better beware. And this attentiveness to imperialist power relations and imbalances is why the discipline of critical geography came into being also during the heydays of post-structuralism, which was all about recognizing the Foucauldian entanglement of power and knowledge. Rather than conceiving maps as flat representational objects untouched by either power relations or social political reality, critical geographers such as John Brian Harley, but also Dennis Cosgrove, conceptualize maps as forms of power knowledge used by modern states to legitimize their colonial conquests and the construction of empires. Seen through this critical geographical perspective, map makers are just not only invested in designing maps to show the world as is, but are probably equally invested in a larger power laden project of what I call onto epistemological world making. Maps do not simply reflect the world as is or what those in charge of these you know, visualizing schemes and tools and um, think it is, but they also demonstrate specific ways of looking at the world. Um, in more Deleuze, Aguatarian and Baradian terms, maps are onto epistemological relational cartographies that spring from a constantly unfolding world. Rhizomes. Together with situated knowledges and various critical geographical principles, Critical cartography is also underpinned by Deleuze-Aguatarian rhizomatic thinking. Writing during the same post-structuralist heydays as Foucault, basically, Deleuze and Guattari's conceptualization of the tree and the rhizome in the introduction to A Thousand Plateaus is of interest to us here. Working towards a more relational way of thinking that has no fixed, and I quote, points or positions, the symbol of the tree firmly anchored by its roots and central stem is a symbol of structure, fixity, and a particularly binary logic of representationalism. Because of the tree's kind of orderly um, vertical shape, the world, according to such a tree logic, is divided into dichotomized binary structures. So with the world on the one hand, and then um, representationalist symbols on the other that represent reality. For Deleuze and Guattari, and I quote, tree, log tree logic, is a logic of tracing and reproduction that is hierarchical in nature as trees um, and their roots grow vertically. They describe this representationalist, reproductive, arborescent thinking as follows in the just mentioned book. And I'll read it out loud, this quote. So they basically say, the tree and root inspire a sad image of thought that is forever imitating the multiple on the basis of a centered or segmented higher unity. Even if the links themselves proliferate, as in the radical system, one can never get beyond the one, two, and fake multiplicities. 
Arborescent systems are hierarchical systems, central automata like organized memories. In contrast, and this is important, the rhizome stands for a more open, non hierarchical, non phalagocentric logic, as rhizomic plants have root systems that are completely entangled with one another and possess nodes that basically enable the horizontal growth of even more roots, as you can see on this um, picture here as well, or our piece. The rhizome is, and I cite Deleuze and Guardari again, altogether different, a map and not a tracing. It is entirely oriented toward an experimentation in contact with the real and has multiple entryways, end quote. So rhizomatic thought is not confined within a fixating structure or an essentializing structure, but rather embodies nomadism, relationality, creativity, and unpredictable growth, um, and therefore can be seen as a driving force behind critical cartographical mapping. And this, of course, brings us to critical cartography. So the continental nomadic philosopher, Rosie Braidotti, who has obviously been inspired by uh, Deleuze Guattari thinking, labels critical cartography as, and I quote her here, a theoretically based and politically informed reading of the present that presents us with both analytic and exegetical tools for critical thought and also creative theoretical alternatives. Braidotti says critical cartography And then I lost my sentence, apologies. Braidotti's critical cartography is not a um, transcendental regulative theory like Kantian or Hegelian or even Marxist philosophy in a way. It is a form of colorful, situated, like materialistic map making with deeply entrenched roots in the material world, therefore packed with the potential to present a geopolitical power focused um, philosophizing with the phenomena of which it is basically sketching the contours. And it is here where um, critical cartography reveals itself as anchored in Deleuze Aquatarian, rhizomatic thought, Foucault's power knowledge notion, Haraway's just mentioned situated knowledge's project, and Adrian Rich's corporeal politics of location. For Braidani, maps are inherently knowledge-laden and power-heavy as they depend on the map maker's viewpoint. Thus, there are no innocent, pure maps out there, no Godricks allowed, basically. The advantage of working with such a situated critical um, cartographical methodology is that it is characterized by an openness to the future and other perspectives infused cartographies on the same topic. If we were to make things more concrete and um, summarize the characteristics of a critical cartography, um, which anyone in any discipline could basically experiment with, I think, then the following points would um, pop up. So firstly, critical cartography builds on Foucauldian archeological and genealogical methods as it touches upon finding the conditions of why something has come into existence. Think of, I don't know, microaggressions or Trumpian post-truth politics, um, which is always a good example, I guess, for instance, while focusing on how knowledge production and power relations are entangled. But it also goes way beyond that. Um, critical cartography demands more from us as knowledge producers um, than merely creating a history of the present through genealogies or even the genealogical tracings of concepts or events or ideas, right? There needs to be a certain openness towards the future to not paralyze the phenomenon of interest, as well as a clear accountable engagement with the map makers' own geopolitical situatedness. And this brings us to the second characteristic. The critical cartographer is supposed to reflect upon their own geopolitical situatedness and also really give an account um, of where they are coming from disciplinarily and also geopolitically speaking. Thirdly, and this is quite interesting, I think if you keep the rhizome in mind, the critical cartography is a lively assemblage uh, with all these you know, crisscrossing nodes, always in the process of also unfolding itself. Fourthly, through the lens of a cartographical method such as this one, power relations are never seen as merely limiting, but are also conceptualized as potentially empowering and generative. 
And last but not least, a fifth and um, well, final aspect of the practice of critical cartography is that it remains open-ended. As Braidotti also writes in Nomadic Subjects from 1994, cartographies mutate and change going with the flow while staying grounded. So critical cartographies follow the movements of forever shifting constellations of the spaces, the archives, the text, the concept, or even whole traditions that are examined through such a critical cartography cartographical lens, meaning that these spaces, archives, and so forth are regarded as lively, as possessing agential power. Now, I'm pretty sure that everyone has been thinking about their own mapping praxis throughout this presentation, which is great. Um, so let's definitely discuss these on Saturday. And if you're interested as a means of preparation, I have actually included my own digital cartographical project of new materialist philosophies on this presentation and also on the PDF of these slides. And you can click on it if you get the digital version, um, which might also be something to further um, explore together as it is kind of a fully um, yeah, integrated website. Now, for now, let's keep things nice and um, extremely abstract and um, conclude this presentation with two philosophical warnings. First, something about the lived materiality of um, critical cartography. It is important to note that the critical cartographical methodology described here is more than just another research tool to, I don't know, critically describe and analyze certain uh, phenomena with. Uh, it really shouldn't be reduced to that. From Braidotti's perspective, a new materialisms driven critical cartography actually emphasizes the situatedness of the entanglements between knowledge production and power relations, as well as a radically imminent ontology or theory of the world. Critical cartography presents us with certain imminent theoretical conceptual takes on the world while simu simultaneously being of and co-engendered with our live worlds. This resembles feminist science studies scholar Karen Barat's notion knowing and being um, a lot, which quite literally means that methodologies like critical cartography are taking us the formerly presumed almighty researchers on an eventful ride. They force us to realize that the phenomena surrounding us are not just out there waiting to be discovered, but are in fact already speaking to us, entangled in lively matters of their own. So thinking here becomes a process of mutual co-constitution in which the researcher in all of their being is completely enmeshed in the phenomena that are being researched. These research phenomena themselves seemingly call for immediate accountability while being exam examined forcing the researcher to reflect on their own positionality over and over again. This represents a thorough reshuffling of the regular onto-epistemological subject-object structure in Western thinking, which rips apart the supposedly distant knower, the object to be discovered, and the knowledge to be produced. Additionally, and this is kind of the, the second warning, if you must, Designing critical cartographies comes with a lot of personal and I would say also collective responsibility. And if the map maker's situatedness is not constantly emphasized and taken into account, the multi-perspectivist nature of such an undertaking could get lost and quite easily so actually. Um, uprooting and, I don't know, universalizing any type of map sketched out would lead to potentially totalizing and even oppressive knowledges that erase different perspectives. And we've been there before, right? So put it in different words and to play with novelist um, Shimamande Adichie's words, the dangers of a single cartography are actually quite plentiful. And the same goes for thinking with a crisis written world, which is currently characterized by this um, reorientation as explored at the start of this presentation. And it's true, the crisis landscapes and times that we are currently inhabiting and experiencing are so disorientating that we could easily be tempted by the ever lurking philosophical desire to create all encompassing, totalizing and reductive grand theories about today. Then on a positive note, not really, the apocalyptic destructive side of the extractive capitalist Anthropocene probably really needs to be reckoned with now before the vicious capitalist cycle brutally comes to an end, when all the material embodied beings, fertile soil and earthly riches have been depleted and destroyed. A critical cartography of our times, which are more complex than ever before, I guess, 
seems extremely necessary, necessary and urgent. And let us hope that the first pen markings will not resemble the old neoliberal normal. So thank you for your attention. As you can see, I've added some of the references here as well. And um, yeah, I'm basically looking forward to seeing you all on Saturday and um, do write down your questions and um, feel free to shoot me an email already if you feel that that's necessary. Okay, great. I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks.